pretty warm up here. Right, so I've cleaned most of the stuff off, basically dumped it there for now. And we're now plotting where the electromagnets are going to go. So you see here, coach wheel end, electromagnet EM, and a circle. Reason being, about there. Because if the electromagnet is essentially here, that will pull that dropper towards it. And the same for the coach. Put the wheel in line with the arrow. And again it's here. So it will pull that dropper. Oops. There. So that's that one plotted. Now I've got to do the same for the other side. Okay, so we have, I'm going to put one here, and here, there, there, I might put three on the yard for non-dingham items, one there, one there, and one there. Well, we've hit a slight snag, because the instructions say that you can't use uh, AC, alternating current, so... Um, that's a bit awkward because last time I'm sure I used these on the AC output on the Gauge Master controller. But either way, I've just turned the Z21 on. I've just done an experiment and tried it. And yeah, okay, fair enough, it doesn't work. So I need to rethink because you can use fixed magnets, but then most things are going to uncouple when you don't want them to. Which is why I need to use something like this. And the only things I could think of at the moment is to put another power supply, and that's DC and wire it up separately. Don't really want to have to use a controller just for that, or them. Um, the other option is you use a mechanical where you have a mo like a magnet that just pops up when you move a lever or something. That could be doable, but then it's faffing around with mechanics. It's like, do I want to do that? Uh, and I'll try to keep it simple. These are quite simple. You wire them in, you put them on a switch. That's it. So I need to think. Okay, so whilst I figure out what I'm going to do with the uncoupling, uh, I've been standing up here, spaced out almost, like thinking, what can I do? So I've neatened the wires here a little bit. Okay, so I've screwed the old bit of track down, cleaned the ends, soldered them, I used a bit of sleeper as a bracket. Okay, done exactly the same there and there. And I've coiled it so I can have a bit extra length because when I take the boards out, and put them on there like I did before, I find it, I can just snip that if I need to. I've got extra length and it's nice and neat. These are still a bit slack, but they don't seem to be a problem. There's much less chance I'm going to snag that, and that's not in the way, despite what it might look like. Plenty of flexibility, and obviously, it looks quite neat now. Mostly neat, I should say. So, um, that's what I've done for the time being. Now you can see my incredibly sophisticated bodge setup trying to do it so I can have this hand free and the other, well, all hands free. So you've got your dingham and it's set to the AC, right? So essentially, this is basically what happens. Get it to focus first and then there you go. That's pretty much the idea. And again. That's how it works. And I'm and this is AC, so it says it only works on DC. Obviously, that's not the truth because it's still working on AC. And I did use it on AC in the past on the Gauge Master uh, combi, which has the same kind of output. So, why doesn't it work on this? It's digital, so obviously the waveform is different. Maybe that's got something to do with it. Maybe I'm wiring up wrong. I don't know, but I tried it and it didn't. So, I'm going to try it again in a different way. And we'll see what happens. Okay, so the Z21's on, but it doesn't work. Just buzzes very slightly. So, yeah, I do need to find a workaround. Well, the time's moved on again. It's the 29th of July now. So, I have found a workaround. Before I show you, you can see some little solder blobs. Right, because I'm not doing it the neatest way, I just want to get on with it, to be fair, I can live with it, paint it in, it's fine. So, I've drilled holes, and I've soldered all the dropper wires, a bit of track, for the curves. 
I've not wired it underneath yet. And I've also hang on, made another little board join, which will go here. And that's basically that. So I've been purchasing some bits and bobs, and now I've got a box of goodies. So this is more than one actual purchase. More wire, because we're running out. The workaround is a night bulb batteries. Because I tried them, and it works. So we're going to be using these, and I might double them up and have 18 volts, because I know some people use 24 volts with the same things, and they're fine. So if 9 volt works, if that lacks a bit of power, then doubling up to 18 will certainly work. And if power drops in, in the course of time, it drops to 15, 16, well then it'll work again, because I use that on other controllers. Um, yeah, I think that's mainly it. I get a lot of my stuff from Rail Room Electronics. You don't have to get it from there, but they've got a good choice, so it's quite useful. Never tried this before, but the concept is the same. Uh, one pound of battery, if they're crap, you can just get a nice joy sale and pay a bit more. But we'll give it a go. I've also got these. Load of switches. Because I was running out of them. Okay, sort that out a minute. More electromagnets. And I 3D printed a baby control panel. I did put SCC on, it's a bit uh, bubbly, shall we say. It's printed at the wrong angle. And that will just fit on top of, I'll glue it on top. And that's going to go like that. So I'm going to cut out a hole in the board. A big enough hole to actually hold all the electronics. And you can just have a baby little panel on the front. Because essentially, I'm going to be close-ish to where I use them. So I don't want to put these on DCC. I just want to control them a nice basic way. So separate circuit, battery. Okay, micro alpha date. We now have this board wired. Apart from the uh, connectors, which is what those dangling wires are all about. Okay, so once they arrive in the post, <coughs> connector will be made and it'll be put back there. The mother of all pig's ears. Marks it, yeah, 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 cut, cut, few holes, did that with a drill. Screw, ah, oh, bugger. Same again, screw, ah, bugger. So I'm doing it here. And I'll cover that with a bit of thin paper or something. Fitted them, look quite nice, don't they? Shiny, blinky, yes. And the wires are there. Um, in hindsight, I think I'll just make another plate that just pretty much fits like that rather than having it stick out. Came to a mini snag. Trying to get the height of these things. So I've put a, a nut in the way. I've run out of nuts, so now I'm making a nut with bits of plastic card and card. Crude as anything, but does it matter? No. Okay, so this is a Mark II version of the micro control panel, more like a plate. Uh, electromagnets, where well, the switch is from. Real simple. Like I said, that abomination I'll have to cover over. I'm showing you so you don't make the same cock up. And just fit in like that. I'll cover that with paper. Okay, and then you can in the local vicinity, it saves board wiring. Now I'll wire it up to the batteries and uh, it'll be good. The same panel's gonna be on the other board as well, but we're gonna do this one first. Right, so I've just wired it and fitted it. I've not tested it yet. So essentially you go battery, join the reds, okay, there. Daisy chain the red, bum, 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 to each one. And then on the other contacts, you go to individual Electromagnets, and then basically with the black, you go round, using the same piece of wire, which is the bits semi-stripped, and just daisy chain all them for the return. Again, join the blacks, and there we are. Not tried it, I'm going to flip the board and give it a go. Okay, as I said on the previous video, these dingums are not made that well, and they're not set up brilliantly because the buffers need to be pushed in properly, so sometimes it's a bit difficult to get them to work reliably and that just takes practice. So just there. there you go. It should drop on top of the latch, but obviously my building's a bit naff. We can sort it out on future builds and revise them, not too worried about it. There you go. Good. 
So, that lack of reliability is not the magnets, it's me. And if in the course of time um, the batteries run out, well, I can just add some new batteries or even double up a third pack. Not a problem. I consider that successful. This board is now electromagnetized. And the next board now needs doing, which instead of having four, we'll have five. Remember this part of the layout? It's now got a bit more complex. This is now the third iteration of this area. Right? So now we actually have switches that can now independently control each bus circuit. Um, three here, three buzzes. That one links the buzzes together. Like this. This is slightly messy. Got to take one off. These three switches are a little bit ickledy pickledy because I was using one of these after I already put a drill hole in, and as a result, it slipped and moved and made a bit of a mess, which is annoying. But never mind, lesson learned. Um, also, I've had to glue the switches in because the little collar that you tighten it with won't go through this because it's too thick. So, another little cock up. Anyway, concept is. Power comes in here, that's illuminated, or the power goes there, that'll be illuminated, and so on. All right. Um, so this is like for DC or if you fault finding. Press that, puts power to all of these. So now that all the track circuits are linked. All right. Off, off. So they've all off even though they've always illuminated anyway. Sure, you have three locos. And this one refers to the first track, middle one, the next track, that one, the furthest track. And essentially, that puts power to each buzz independently, or takes it off. And I've tested it, and it works a treat. So it's 25th of August, and we now have the last five electric magnets installed. So it's basically exactly the same as these ones, which looks an awful mess, but we'll sort that out later. Okay, tested it, the electromagnets work. There's five of them, no problem showing you, I've already showed you me. I need to change or rather tweak the extra couplings themselves because the reliability of them isn't brilliant but that's not the magnets that's just my building technique um, but yeah there's nothing else to show I mean that's, that's that's done now so this board that board and the corner board are apart from later signals and lights to the best of my knowledge completely wired now 100% so I've just got to put the curves on the corner and we can finally start to make a loop Okay, so this is now the last part of the video. I've got the tablet sorted out, my dad's tablet that is, so I can show you what's going on with these switches and give you a very quick demo. If you look at this trap plan, it's a bit different now in its presentation. It's actually orientated correctly. A little video, I did a very, very short video about the Z21, giving a shout out, well this is the result of it. So now it's actually orientated as you look at it, and the presentation is different. It was a lot quicker to set up, and it's just easier. But anyway, go to the track. So at the moment, you have all three switches pressed in, which puts power to all three lines. You press that, then bottom two will conk out, because this one's connected to them two. You press that, it basically puts that power to them and them at the same time. right? So at the moment, you have the 101. And it moves, right? Similarly, get the cobo on the go, that moves as well. And then you can get Henry on the go, and that moves. But if I press that bottom one, that'll knock out the back track. So now Henry won't do anything, right? Nothing, unless I press it, right? Same as the cobo, that's on the middle track. So in the moment, it move, but press that, it'll kill it. You see? Might kill it as well. And again, the same as the top one for the 101. It move. Well, it move now it's pressed in, now it's stop it. Off, off. So, put them back on, it should all move. So, the purpose of that is, like I said, Power goes in here, goes to that, which represents the first buzz track, okay? And you can independently turn the second or third one off, 
That one connects them all together, so it's DCC, it's all as one at the moment. Any problems with diagnostics, you just take off the track circuit that you need. Or, if you can use three separate power circuits to go into them, just keep make sure that's off. And you can use three separate DC analog controllers. It works for me. Yes. And it looks kind of cool, apart from my messy installation. Alright, I will leave it there. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you, well, whatever the next video is, I guess. See you in a bit.